It's time once again for another episode of the Franchise Business Radio Show. Broadcasting live from the Pro Business Channel Studios in Atlanta. And now here's your host, Pam Curie. Welcome to the Franchise Business Radio Show. This is host Pamela Curry. Really excited about the show today. We have got uh, just some excellent guests in the studio uh, representing franchising on different levels and perspectives. Absolutely. And so um, uh, if you're just listen, tuning in for the first time to Franchise Business Radio, as uh, the announcer mentioned, it's hosted by founder of uh, Franchise Intellect. Pam Curie is a franchise advisor and strategist for franchise rest, uh, recruitment and training. Yeah, that's mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, there's more. Say that, I like th- say that five <laughs> times. <laughs> but like they say, and there's more. So um, in addition to hosting the Franchise Business Radio and founder, as we mentioned, as Franchise Intellect, over 20 years in the industry. Yes, well, let's, plus, let's, yeah. let's clarify. <laughs> give, give or take. In the business world, 25 plus, and actually oh, that's specifically right. in the franchise industry, I guess I'm yeah, well, getting we, over 15 but now, you, so you um, want to go there. <laughs> you transitioned from corporate America, which is a great perspective, right? Absolutely. To add to the, uh, to the mix, and you acquired your business acumen from multiple perspectives of the franchise business model. Uh, you enjoy helping individuals consider franchise ownership and consult on training programs, yeah. which is kind of unique because... Um, uh, you wear not multiple hats, obviously you do, but from that training perspective. So you're not, you're kind of continuing that education, if you will, in the industry. Yeah, you know, there's just, there are so many pillars that go along with franchising. So I, it, you do um, end up wearing a lot of different hats depending on the size of the franchisor. So I very much help with uh, the training as well as the recruitment with specific franchisors. And in addition to that, uh, help individuals who are considering franchise ownership. It's a, it's a big decision. And we'll definitely talk about that at the, uh, as we wrap up the show at the end about um, services you provide for those individuals, the broker services and all that good stuff. Great. But um, uh, before we jump in and introduce our guests, uh, let f- folks know the best way to reach out to you. What's your yeah, point of contact? Um, if anyone's looking to reach out to me, um, obviously email uh, Pam at franchiseintellect.com and intellect is spelled I-N-T-E-L-L-E-C-T dot com. Can't tell you how many times yeah. I asked that <laughs> question. So Pam at franchiseintellect.com, phone number 847 847- Nine seven zero eight seven six five. All right, and uh, before we jump into our first guest, let's just welcome the folks that are joining us here in the studio yeah. for this episode. Oh uh, yeah, really excited. We actually have a return guest um, that I want to welcome back to the studio. Thomas, welcome back to the studio. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Please tell, say hello to our listeners and just tell us who are you with and what will we be talking about today. Sure, I'm. Uh, a an SBA lender or brand bank here locally in Georgia, uh, and I help businesses finance those opportunities when they're looking to either open up a franchise or expand into another location uh, when they don't have all the capital themselves. I'm one of the resources here to help businesses get their project off the ground. So, so you mean funding is important to go into business ownership? <laughs> going to need some money to put behind it, yeah. I understood. Well, that's going to be an important topic. We're going to circle back around with you on that. And Mike, so good to see your face. Good morning, Pam. Uh, welcome. And, and you know what? This is radio, but we are going to put this on Facebook, LinkedIn, so your face will be seen, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who you're with and what we're going to be talking about today. Great. Well, first, thanks for uh, having me. Good to see you again. Absolutely. I'm with uh, Franchise Development Group uh, with my partner here, Drew Paris, to, uh, and to uh, talk a little bit about Marilyn Monroe and Tap Out Fitness today. I cannot wait to learn more about that. Yeah, two great iconic brands we're, mm-hmm. we're happy to be a part of. A lot of happening there. Excellent. Did he say Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. not going to be in the studio. Yeah, I'll, 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 be, I'll be tuning into that one. Whenever, yeah. <laughs> That's really going to boost our listener. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Drew, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. And um, just kind of give us an understanding, you and Mike are partners, and you are with? Franchise Development Group. And who are you going to be speaking about today? What brand? Again, we're going to talk about Marilyn Monroe Spas and Tap Out Fitness. Great. Uh, two, two important concepts about looking good, right? Uh, <laughs> health and <laughs> <fit wellness>. Okay, <laughs> all right. There you go. <laughs> but if you're healthy, man, you shine, look good, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Michelle, welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about who you're here representing uh, oh. because you're going to give our listeners a great perspective on uh, what it means to be stepping into the franchise world. Absolutely. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Michelle Bolden. I'm with Home Helpers and Direct Link of Atlanta. 
So we provide in-home personal care as well as companion care and other services I would love to get into as well. Oh, great. All right, so talk to me a little bit. How long, it, how long have you, when did you become a ho home helper franchisee? Okay. I'm still new, not quite to my first year yet. So I um, purchased an existing business back in July of 2015. Congratulations. So about seven, eight months now, yeah. yes. <laughs> Well, congratulations. So give us a little history then on Home Helpers. Okay. So Home Helpers, actually, um, the brand itself began back in 97. So we're almost about 20 years old. Mm. Um, we're in about 600 communities right now. Um, so we cover pretty much all of the United States as well as I think we have some uh, agency now in Canada as well. Um, wow. my, the, our existing business that I have right now has been in existence about eight years now. All right. So I service Metro Atlanta, um, so the city of Atlanta and pretty much all of its communities. So that would be Midtown, Downtown, Buckhead, Virginia Highlands, Vinings. Um, so I have two territories that cover uh, most of the city and some surrounding communities. Wow, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great territory and a lot of development yes. I mean, as we are witnessing with all the traffic and everything else. Uh, well, you know what? I don't want to make any assumptions that our listeners know exactly what Home Helpers does. I mean, the, the name speaks for itself, but would you share a little bit about what your services are and what you're offering to the Atlanta community? Absolutely. So um, we provide um, in-home care. So we identify those who have needs or those come to us who have needs um, for either seniors um, those who are disabled, those who are recuperating from a procedure or have a short-term sickness. Um, we help new moms, maybe those who are still not quite have gone through labor, who are maybe on bed rest, um, who need assistance in the home. So it can include mm. basic things like light housekeeping, meal preparations, running errands, helping to get ready for appointments, taking them to an appointment, um, just socializing, playing cards, taking them to a friend's home. Absolutely. Um, or all those things that we consider personal or touch care, feeding, grooming, bathing, mm. dressing. So those who have more medical needs who may be on bed rest or even need assistance with ambulation. So they're getting up from the bed to a wheelchair or mm. they need a cane. Um, so we provide from the very basic all the way to complete care. We can do anywhere from just a couple hours to 24 seven. So if someone needs us there 24 seven, we can take care of someone. Um, if someone is a caregiver and they just need a break, I need a weekend away or I'm going away, we can come in and care for that person from 24 seven as well. Wow, and you know, you take a lot of those things for granted when you get to can do it for yourself, absolutely, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. So a very needed service. Uh, tell, tell us, I mean, obviously you've just stepped into the franchise world, uh, what you've been said about seven or eight months ago, why home helpers? Well, you know, as I was selecting um, options, you know, I finally come to a point in 20 years into my career into healthcare where I finally decided I really wanted to do my own thing, but I still had that fear of leaping out there. Um, so I figured I would at least try a franchise. I wanted to go outside of healthcare, try something different, new. But this opportunity kept coming up because it's such a growing business. Our baby boomers are just increasing. They're about a fourth of our population now. Mm -hmm. They'll continue to grow. So this came up over and over again as an opportunity. And as I researched different types of home care providers, I found um, Home Helpers was a better opportunity for me because it allowed for me to reach out to the payer sources I wanted to um, you know, service and be able to uh, provide for my clients. Um, it gave me the flexibility of knowing that they were pretty much national, they were real es well established. Mm -hmm. And one key thing is that when I talked to the other franchisees, they were awesome in just giving me good information, mm -hmm. wanting to network, wanting to help and reach out. Yes. So when you come in as a new franchisee, it's good to have that support um, as you move forward and you grow. And that was there as well. So that was a big attraction for me as well. Wow, excellent, excellent tips for mm -hmm. anyone that mm -hmm. is considering franchise ownership. And I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Um, obviously, you mentioned that you have a background in healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, and Michelle, you are um, an RN with mm -hmm. an MBA. Yeah. You've worked in a variety of healthcare positions, including adult and pediatric clinical work, discharge planning, case management, and administration. Wow, Correct. that is a dynamic career in healthcare, okay. um, and um, you've been a foundation for introduction to entrepreneurship as now the CEO for Home Helpers and Direct Link of Correct. Atlanta. Correct. So definitely a lot of rich, yeah. rich history and background there mm -hmm. for this for this particular industry. Mm -hmm. 
With that being said, what are your screen? What's your screening process for caregivers? Okay, um, and of course, that's the key of um, to our business success is having those caregivers that are very caring and compassionate. But also, we look at their background. We do a background check um, upon pre-employment, a drug screen with pre-employment, and then we do it annually as well. Mm -hmm. um, we also do a series of interviews. Um, we look at um, references as well. And we just kind of get that intuition about a key person. Are they a good fit? Based upon their experience, we'll let them go into a home, get some training with another caregiver, so we can observe them with the client as well and how they work with the client. Um, we also use a matching system um, that we have oh. within our own system that's called Home Track that we use, and we match up a client based upon their preferences with the caregiver's preferences. Do you like dogs? You know, are you okay with walking someone? Are you okay with running? Those type of things to make sure that they're a good match for the client. You know, there's always just so many little intimacies yes. that you have to take into consideration. Right. You know, I, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Yes, I'm allergic to cats, right? right? And Absolutely. I mean, I, it makes perfect sense to me. Um, now, when I think of health care, there's a lot of state regulations, licenses. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. Okay. So we are licensed by the state of Georgia. Um, and we also are also have an additional waiver under a Medicaid program called CCSP. So we kind of have two certifications or abilities to serve clients as a licensed provider, but also through also one of their waiver programs. Um, so we maintain our licensing to meet the Georgia state requirements. We also exceed as well. So there's liability insurance that we have to carry, workers' compensation insurance that we have to carry, um, and then also that screening, there's requirements by the state we have to meet as well. So we keep up to par with those and then also, again, exceed their expectations. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed alone. Yeah, do you even remember <laughs> how to regurgitate all of that stuff? But how does Home Helpers set itself apart from personal care providers? Because there is a difference, right? right? Mm -hmm. So could you kind of elaborate on the difference and okay. how you are different? Okay. So now when we say personal care provider, we are considered to be a personal care provider. Okay. Now there are two types of providers. There may be medical, which generally requires a physician's pr um, prescription. Mm -hmm. So it has to be ordered. It's a very skilled visit. There's an RN who comes in. She may do vital signs. Or there's a physical therapist or occupational therapist who comes in and provides their service. That is skilled care. Then you have non-skilled, in which what we're providing. It does not require a physician's order, but you do provide all the care that we give as well. The personal care, the touch care, the companionship also. So those are the two differences. Okay. And for home helpers, we really look to make sure that we have a match with the caregiver, but also that we're also making sure we have dependent caregivers as well. We often see that challenge. We get calls from folks who have... You know, their caregiver didn't show up. I was supposed to go to work, but there's no one there to take care of my mom. Yeah. Or I'm not comfortable with this person. Mm -hmm. So we have very dependable caregivers, and that makes a difference for our clients and their families. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. this is not a nice-to-have service. That's this right. is a need-to-have. Need to have. To have. Absolutely. 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 Um, so if someone were in that situation where they were had a need-to-have mm -hmm. circumstance, um, how do they go about finding you and paying for your services? Okay. So they can always call us, and our number is 404-624-4663. And they can also reach out to our website. Um, it's homehelpers, with an S, homecare.com, forward slash N dash Atlanta. You better repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> homehelpers, with an S, homecare.com, forward slash N dash Atlanta. They can reach out. Our website has lots of information actually if they tap onto our event page there's a special if they hit pro business channel today we have a special out there that they can uh, get an introductory special for them as well Excellent. if they tap onto our website and you can complete the information there you can just give us a call we'd be more than happy to help well talk about paying for services because okay. obviously there's a there's a little bit of a discount that you're receiving by mm -hmm. mentioning pro business channel right. or, or th thank you very much for that rich do you appreciate thank that you. oh at his point no one <laughs> else in the studio can i guess our listeners can't see this but we are looking at the website page right now mm -hmm. where uh, yeah we have a coupon code pro business receive one free hour of in-home care excellent michelle yeah. okay outside of that 
how do clients pay for your services? So we have self-pay, of course. Um, then also you can pay through the Medicaid waiver program if you're, you're um, eligible for that program. Um, often there's benefits. Sometimes in commercial insurance have caveats. You really just have to look and identify. Um, they may have benefits for four hours of care, 100 days a year. Mm. Um, if you need help with that, we can certainly help you to identify if your plan covers that long-term insurance, workers' comp insurance, we also take those as well. There are benefits for veterans and their spouse sometimes that they really don't know about. So mm -hmm. we can also help you to dive into that information as well. But always just give us a call. We can help you with the money situation. We just want to make sure that the, the service is provided. And giving an in-home consultation allows us to get close and personal with understanding your needs. Absolutely. And we can certainly do that at no cost. The consultation is at no cost. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hard service to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And real quick, just a final question. Uh, what's next for Home Helpers of Atlanta? Well, right now, as I'm getting into the business, um, we're really trying to grow our business partners. Um, we want to be able to be a resource for our clients. So if we can't meet their needs, we want to be able to refer them to those who can. Mm -hmm. So we're really working with business um, partners in the community, other facilities, um, other providers in order to make sure we can meet the client's needs. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show today. And if time permits, we're going to circle back around with you. Your services are invaluable. Thank you. I appreciate having <laughs> you having us today. Absolutely. We've just, uh, we're kind of talking about, uh, we kind of have a theme going here, Rich. We've got, you know, health and wellness, health care, <laughs> home care. <laughs> financial care. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> financial care. <laughs> we're covering almost all the bases. <laughs> I just have a quick question. Um, I didn't realize we had lighthouses in Atlanta. Did you mention you clean lighthouses? Oh, lighthouse keeping. Never yes. mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was corny. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. Can we cut that out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we can. So we need to, yeah. I, I wish, I'm wishing we would cut it out already. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, let's welcome our next guest yes. uh, to the studio. As we mentioned, um, the folks from uh, Franchise Group, uh, that's Mike and Drew. Right? That's correct. Okay, and uh, the director of franchise development for a franchise group LLC, and uh, which is a national consulting firm specializing in franchise brand development and sales strategies. Uh, current clients include, as we mentioned, Marilyn Monroe Spas and Tap Out Fitness. That is, uh, there's, there's. I'll, I'm going to come up with something there a little bit later in the show about those yeah. two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if they have, if they haven't already heard it, both iconic international brands uh, now emerging into a franchise locations worldwide, coming to a. A spot near you, right? A spa near you. Coming to a spa near you. Oh, oh great. We're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so you can find out about these folks at uh, just frangroup.com. And uh, let's jump into some um, yeah, conversation. Yeah, where, where to begin here, Drew and, Drew and Mike? Um, Drew, I just want to just kick off with you. And first, just talk to us about Franchise Group. What is it that you do? What are your services? Well, we've been helping franchisors for about 20 years. And we help emerging and new franchisors develop their growth and development strategies. Absolutely. So we actually help design territorial development plans, the path that they're gonna go to bring in franchisees. And then we try to execute that and find quality franchisees for the brands. Understand fully, uh, and I, as you know, dabble a little bit, and we're going to collaborate after the show. Because <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> I absolutely, but you are really focused on two specific clients right now, and exciting brands. Which one? Talk to us. Which one would you like to talk to us about first? Well, both are fun, and the, the nice part about this is that it's actually a fun business to be involved in, right? Ah, yes, yeah, most health, definitely. health, fitness, and beauty. It's uh, it's a nice day. <laughs> so, uh, luckily, our, our firm was uh, approached by the parent company of both of these brands, which is called Authentic Brands Group, okay. which is based out of New York, and they're a big, giant media company. And, I mean, think about the iconic brands of Marilyn Monroe or Tap Out, you know, worldwide brands, huge exposure, millions and millions of dollars in sales, and now they decided to franchise. Mm. So, we feel very fortunate that we are part of that and leading the charge for that. 
So both of them are fun to talk about, but let's talk about, I'll talk about tap out first. How about okay, that? Okay, perfect. <laughs> can I can I do a little funny story on the way in here? Sure, please. We were, we were laughing because I, I was on the elevator and uh, the gentleman in the elevator with me was with WWE, who's actually in the same building as our studio. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but explain that quick connection. Well, um, things are moving very fast and this is why it's fun and exciting because we're incorporated entertainment into this whole arena also. And most people will recognize the name Tap Out through some sort of sport, some through some sort of uh, MMA right. or martial arts or something like that. And Authentic Brands Group has really charted a path to create Tap Out to be a global iconic health and fitness brand. Mm. And in that, it caught the attention of the WWE. And the WWE last year actually bought into Tap Out and now are our vested partners. So you start to see some really exciting stuff. You start to see the WWE superstars wearing our product lines. Yes. You start to see promotions all over on television and stuff like that. So for a franchisee, it's, it's an incredible opportunity where they can get in on the ground floor basically because it is an emerging brand. But they have this global name. Mm -hmm. They've got mass media everywhere so there's some tremendous advantages for the franchisees for this oh yeah because well, i mean obviously one of the advantages of becoming a franchisee is brand awareness and hopefully that makes it a little easier for customer awareness and at customer acquisition right right exactly well it's fun because again like i said i just was watching an e-television special the other day at um, a wwe show mm -hmm. and there was our brand being yes. featured normally. Or just the other day, we saw John Cena on the Today Show wearing Tap Out and giving shout outs and Tap Out Fitness. So, all of that plays into you know very positive feedback and a growth of the brand. And like I said, they have a long term growth strategy to turn Tap Out into a full health life fitness brand to compete globally. Great. And you've, you've brought up one of the superstars, uh, John Cena. Who are a couple of the other WWE superstars? Well, Roman Reigns is re really big right now. Charlotte's really big right now. Mm -hmm. She's the champion. Uh, Charlotte was on the cover of Muscle and Fitness just last month wearing Tap Out. <laughs> so it's, it's incorporated. It's being organically incorporated throughout the whole WWE. Now, because they are our partner, and they're not a licensee. It's not like we're paying them for sponsorship. It's in everyone's best interest to promote the brand, to promote the growth, to promote you know this whole product line. And Tap Out has been around for about 18 years. And there's a lot of different product lines from clothing yeah. to supplements Thank to you. accessories and stuff like that. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity that then, since we're talking about franchising here, the franchisee has the ability to take advantage of. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a lot, a lot of advantages for a franchisee to be involved in this program right now. So based upon that, because that's why I was picking, I was you know, just doing a little bit of homework before our show today, there's multiple revenue streams for the franchisee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, do you want to, I mean, so like one, uh, obviously, if they, you have the tap-out fitness gyms. Uh, obviously, state of the art, full service training facilities, uh, weight training, cardio activities, boxing. So, a lot of different options there. And you just mentioned something else. Uh, talk to me about, uh, I guess, some of the apparel, the performance apparel, the accessories. Right. That's got to be a great revenue stream. Absolutely. Um, and Authentic Brands Group has just signed deals, for example, with um, uh, national department stores all across the country. And where our product lines are top shelf or, you know, full on sections. I don't want to name some of the the department stores, but mm -hmm. it's it's seen all over. And now the franchisees have the opportunity to have those same product lines inside their clubs and generate the revenue just like they would at a retail store. Excellent. So they can add all of those extra services on. What's n unique about Tap Out, what they've done, though, is they spent the time to actually research the industry to figure out what not as just trendy, not what is just hot today. How do we keep clients engaged in fitness for a longer period of time? And a big focus of that is martial arts. That way your kids are in these programs for years and they're just not there for months. 
And so now the programs engage with the families and the kids, and then the families and the kids buy the products, and the families and kids become loyal to the brand, and this is the whole strategy for the next 20 years. Makes perfect sense. And, and I, I really like the idea, especially in today's world, of incorporating that kind of regimen into our, uh, to our youth. Mm -hmm. I agree. We are anti-bullying, women's self-defense mm -hmm. classes, and things like that, right? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and I, I want to learn a little bit. That, that's uh, Tap Out Fitness, but you've got another great client you're working with, uh, Marilyn Monroe Spas. How, uh, that's an easy name to remember, <laughs> right? <laughs> Forget about Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Exactly. Mike, would you like to speak to us a little bit about Marilyn Monroe Spas? Sure, absolutely. So after you go to Tap Out Fitness, you come to Marilyn Monroe Spas, <laughs> and we, ju we, ju we are just going to make you give you the Marilyn Monroe experience. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you know, just to, to uh, a lot of this in the same context of Tap Out, uh, Marilyn Monroe is also an iconic brand, so we were, were able to capitalize on on that as well. And uh, I, I'll tell you, have, we, we've got very parallel lives, Pam. I've we been in, in, the, in the corporate franchising business as well as being a, a franchisee, so entrepreneurial and corporate got both of those covered. Mm -hmm. and, and where I'm going is I was so impressed with the leadership team at Marilyn Monroe. Uh. Just a, a great team when it comes to being able to, to, to position the brand for global growth and really being able to support the franchisees. Uh, it's just a great story. Excellent. Tell us the history. Uh, sure, sure. Well, I tell you, as far as the leadership, uh, first of all, they did, they, you know, we all know that Marilyn Monroe epitomizes beauty and glamour, so they wanted to be able to couple that brand with a resort-like spa experience, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting a great experience in a great-looking facility, at great value, at great value. So uh, long story short, Nikki Bryant, the founder, she's been in the resort spa business for over 30 years. She's uh, done very well, uh, knows everything about the business. And then our chairman, Al Weiss, was a former executive at Disney, uh, managed over 95,000 associates at one time. Is that globally. all? Globally, that's it, that's Jeez. it. So I think he knows just a little bit about uh, <laughs> growing a brand globally and building a great infrastructure. And then we had our CEO, Jim Lewis, who was a former executive at Walmart. And of course, they needed some experts to uh, help them franchise, and that's where Drew and I come in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, if, if that's so. right. It's building the perfect yeah, team. Yeah. So, so um, th you've got great leadership there. They've done a great job to position the franchise system to support the franchisees from an infrastructure standpoint. I, I appreciate what you were saying earlier, Michelle, about the mm. the good franchise or support. Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to training, marketing helping franchisees get off the ground, their position to do that. We've got skin in the game. You right. know, we have we have 10 company locations I was going to ask you really about well. that, and, yeah. and you're bringing, that's yeah. a really good point, Mike, because yeah. I think sometimes uh, an emerging brand, franchise sure. brand, yeah. Uh, yeah. doesn't, even though it's an emerging franchise brand, it doesn't mean that they don't have deep experience in the business itself that's exactly right and it sounds like you know this leadership at the Marilyn Monroe spas mm -hmm. has really deep industry experience and leadership experience absolutely they're very focused on the operational component we have a great business model uh, and and because of that they're they're looking for uh, you know French you know ideal candidates that are very interested in becoming part of a global system that mm -hmm. that's able to execute and follow a proven model. Understand. They're walking the walk. That's it. They, and, and we've got, uh, in addition to that, um, you've got uh, great training support for franchisees. Uh, you know, it's very comprehensive. Uh, they have a, a, a beauty school to help franchisees understand what they need to do to recruit the best in the industry. The, the, ex the customer experience, the guest experience at the spa is, you know, as we all know, it's, 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 it's critical 
to every unit to be able to execute, to be the best in class compared to every other spa that's out there. Yeah, and spa is a broad term. Sure. So maybe we should talk about that a little bit. What services uh, What services would I go to Marilyn Monroe Spa School? You know, we're a one-stop shop. We okay. can help you with hair, makeup, massage, wax, facials, pedicures, you name it. Mm. And, and in addition to that, uh, all of our beauty products, there's a retail component to the business model certified organic beauty products okay. you know so uh you can feel good about what we're using and what what you're using as a as a guest so we're excited about it a yeah. lot of great things happening yeah. and real quick where are they headquartered out of orlando That's florida what I thought. Yeah. okay and, and we haven't done you know the, the brand is an emerging brand we've got 11 franchisees uh, already Excellent. a couple of multi-unit folks and uh uh, you know, one thing about Maryland is that it, it fits all different type of models. You know, we're, we're looking for the single unit, multi-unit. We have a great area development program. You do. All right. That's, and you know what, for our listeners, let's talk about that because sure. they may not understand. Uh, most people understand a single unit, mm-hmm. multi-unit, Mul- pretty explainable, but mm-hmm. area development. Talk to us about sure. that. Sure. We, we, this is a great brand for those that may want to diversify their existing business portfolio. Mm. Uh, if somebody is interested in developing, you know, anywhere from five to ten locations in a, in a specific area uh, where, where they meet the demographic requirements, we have that opportunity for them. Chance to build that mini That's empire. Right. Sure, I get- exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And have the exclusive rights. Uh, you know, t- to the to the getting in on the ground floor of growing out this iconic brand. You know what you're, and and I just want to talk franchising a little bit. I, I often share mm-hmm. with many one of the advantages of an emerging brand, and there's trade offs with everything, uh, yeah. but a big uh, advantage is scalability. Absolutely, right. There's so much great opportunity, great scalability, and not only that, but. Because you're not such a big system yet, you probably mm-hmm. have direct access to that executive team that you're talking about. And uh, you get a little bit more of that direct access, mm-hmm. have more of a voice. You're just not a number in the system. That's uh, exactly right. So there's, there are so many great advantages with an emerging brand, uh, especially one with that kind of deep industry experience mm-hmm. and now franchise expertise. Yeah, right? and the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. For, for area development franchisees, the, the construction and real estate support is second to none. Mm-hmm. We, we have partnered up with a uh, great real estate company, Newark Grub Knight, uh, and they are a global real estate company that helps us find some of the best locations anywhere in the world. So a nice. lot of good support to get that franchisee set up for success. Okay, well, I'm interested. So how do I get in touch with you? Yeah, Mike C. <laughs> at frangroup.com. Easy enough. Mike C. at frangroup.com. And my number is 678-641-6473. Well, wow, I'm excited. Thank you for sharing. A lot Thank of, you, a lot of good great to see new you brands. Again. Good to see you as well. Thanks. Well, you know, it all sounds great. We've got these great franchise opportunities out, out there, but um, there's one key factor in order to make that happen, and that's funding. How am I going to go about uh, getting the money to invest and own my own franchise? So, Rich, would you mind introducing our next guest, because he might be able to help us out in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Thomas Rockwood. Rockwood. Um, Just one Rockwood in your name, right? Just one, yeah. Um, Is an SBA lender at the Brand Bank based here in Georgia. I actually have a location right out, pretty much out our window here in Buckhead, right? Yeah, it's like a three-minute walk. Yeah, yeah. Um, And... All right, and you, I was going to say something, but uh, <laughs> I had a really bad joke, Rich, and I'm sorry because you started us down this path. You I were know. Mentioned his name, Rockwood. I was going to say it, it's Rockwood Paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and scissors. You got to fill in scissors. In there, scissors too. There you go. <laughs> Which is called Rochambeau, right? Is the actual uh, technical name for that? Yeah. Um, all right. Sorry, Thomas. Back to. Meanwhile, back to the show. Uh, by the way, you're listening to Franchise Business Radio with your host Pam Curie, and if you're just uh, dialing in, uh, great conversation going on so far, and we're introducing, we're continuing the introduction. <laughs> of Thomas Rockwood. Um, so uh, your focus on helping businesses throughout the Southeast uh, obtain U.S. Uh, Small Business Administration financing for projects such as business acquisitions, expansion, partner buyouts, business startups, which is all these are huge right now, right? I Absolutely. mean, um, and, um, and you bring a wealth of, uh, no pun intended, um, program experience, uh, expertise and experience to your clients, help willing to uh, talk them through and advise business owners on how to best secure their loans, request um, to ensure a smooth process. 
which is kind of uh, can be treacherous waters and just the unknown, right, when you start talking dollars and cents and numbers and funding. So, um, uh, so Thomas, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate for being uh, for. <laughs> See, I got you started yeah. here. <laughs> That's easy for you to say, Thomas. Exactly. Yeah. So, and well, actually, welcome back to the show. And uh, I know you are a wealth of knowledge, no pun intended. And we're going to try to, uh, we ought to give up our comedian hats because we're not very good at it. <laughs> Stick with what we know best, which is franchising, right? <laughs> um, well, obviously, uh, funding is a very important aspect. And um, I know your area of expertise is around SBA loans. Um, could you? Just, you know, what are some of the advantages of an SBA loan, and why do businesses look to banks for SBA loans? No, absolutely. It's a great question. Um, I think, you know, if I had to break it down, I think there's probably three main advantages or reasons why businesses really do want an SBA loan over over other types of capital. Um, Really is the cash injection requirement, um, I'd say the terms of the loan itself, and then the types of transactions that an SBA loan allows a bank to do. Um, ultimately, those are those are the big pieces. Um, you know, in terms of cash injection, people are always like, "How much do I have to put in? I, I got this project I want to fund. I don't want to sink every dollar I have into it." And and that's a great reason to look at an SBA loan. Um, I would say, on average, we're looking at probably ten to fifteen percent of a project as a as a total cash injection, and then let the SBA loan or some other type of financing cover the rest. And that's okay. where structuring and having those upfront conversations is important. Um, I think the terms of the loan as well are probably the a, a big reason. Um, real estate can go out to 20, 25 years. Uh, equipment and, and some of these tr- different kinds of business acquisition transactions, mm-hmm. they can go 7 to 10 years. Mm. So really that extended term ultimately means less cash on a monthly basis out of the owner's pocket, um, uh, keeping that cash in the business. Right, a cash flow, right? Very, Correct. very important to have that in place. Uh, and uh, you just brought up a really good point. I mean, if, if someone's looking for funding, they could get multiple lending sources. SBA could be a, is a supplementary. Am I understanding that correctly? It could, it could be if it needs to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, depending on the project, right? The, in, a, in a business acquisition scenario, for example, um, I think, Michelle, you said you bought an existing location. Um, part of that cash can come from the buyer. Part of it can be that, that down payment could come from a seller's note, and then the SBA or the bank loan can cover the remaining portion. So mm-hmm. there's ways to work with how much cash is available. Obviously, someone go- just getting started, you don't want to put 100% of all of your cash into the project. Mm. It's post to have, uh, important to have post-transaction liquidity. So mm-hmm. you know what amount is, is required, what that appetite is to pull the project off, I think is really kind of where the flexibility and the strength of an SBA loan comes in, depending on which bank you're working with. So. I'm going to steal that post-transaction liquidity. Now, that is a fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, after you funded the deal, how much cash do you still have left, right? And, and, and that's that's a critical number. You don't want to have zero. That would be a bad number. So uh, if I were to get a loan, what would be, I guess, some typical interest rate structures and repayment terms on that SBA loan? Yeah, no, absolutely. It depends on what you're actually financing. Um, you know, real estate obviously has a long life as opposed to intangibles, right? So if you're buying a business, um, those are typically on 10-year terms. But if there's a long-term asset involved, uh, we can look at extending that to 15, 20, 25 years. Um, and depending on what you're actually trying to finance, that's either an adjustable rate structure or a fixed rate structure. So, um, you know, many clients say, okay, I'm expanding to a new location, um, they just need to buy the real estate component. So the SBA has a 504 loan program that allows a 10% cash injection to buy that real estate, and a portion of that's fixed rate for 20 years. Wow, um, okay. Which is pretty unheard of, right? Um, the, the other flip side to it is, you know, if you're trying to finance a business acquisition where there's nothing really that you can touch, it's mostly intangibles, um, you know, we can structure that so that there's no balloon payments and it just pays down to zero over a period of time on an adjustable rate. So really, there's a lot of flexibility and options. Mm -hmm. um, And somewhere between an adjusting and a fixed rate is a solution to work with kind of what you're trying to pull off from project. And that's where an SBA loan is great because you've got a lot of flexibility, a lot of options to help a business meet all of its uh, capital needs. Yeah, it sounds like. And, you know, when when I think about the amount of cash bars are putting in into it, versus the bank financing uh, not uh, help me help me out there a little bit um so when i think of, of that there's uh, 
The amount of cash borrowers are putting in versus the bank is financing. What is the division there? Help me out there. Sure. So if, if you're starting up, and we're going to chat about franchise because that's yeah. our focus here. So if you're saying, okay, I've got a franchise opportunity I'm looking at, um, and, and I'm trying to get this off the ground, let's just – for easy math, say it's a four hundred thousand dollar project. Okay. Um, you know, if you have somewhere between that ten to fifteen percent cash injection, that forty to seventy five thousand um, dollars to put in, that typically covers a franchise fee and some of the closing expenses and some of those things. That's about what you're looking at. I think okay. most banks are looking for today, um, and there's no real firm direction as to what the SBA necessarily wants to see, but it's important to have skin in the game. Absolutely. Um, so some, some sort of cash injection that you've, you're comfortable with, and I think that right number uh, is somewhere between that 10 to 15 percent on the on the low side. Obviously, if someone has more they want to put in, that's okay. And then a bank takes out the rest. Okay. Um, but I, I really like Michelle's story in terms of, mm. you know, she's buying an existing location. It has its own historical cash flow, and we can see mm. that it's been mm. profitable, and those kind of pros. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, from that standpoint, some sort of combination between a seller's note, if a seller can give you great terms there and a cash injection and bank financing, I think that's a great option as well. So there's a lot of room for how much do you really have to put in and what's the way that we can get to a yes and get it done and funded. And you, you're bringing up, it, it, it's not a slam dunk. This is a loan that needs to be approved. And, uh, you know, I, I know in the franchise world, we have our SBA registry. Uh, many franchisors are on that SBA registry. How does that assist in helping someone get that SBA loan approval? Yeah, when a franchise has done the work and the legwork for the franchisee to say, okay, look, we're approved with the SBA. Basically, they've they've taken that franchise disclosure document and they've given it to the SBA to look at and making sure that it's an eligible franchise. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really, the... It comes down to, I think, a, a matter of control. What level of control does the franchisor have over the franchisee? And this is, needs to be a, a business where the franchisor provides support, but ultimately the borrower or the franchisee uh, is running their business, mm. right? So um, it speeds up the process. Um, okay. Those FDDs can be quite long. <laughs> yes, they so can. So <laughs> it takes time for the SBA to review those. So if someone's already, if a franchisor has already gone through the process of getting that reviewed by the SBA, then that speeds up the process. So that speeds up the process, but there are other things that you're looking at, like what kind of experience, industry-specific or otherwise. Uh, what do you want to see from owners of a business that are seeking financing? What are you looking for? Yeah, that's a great question as well. Um, really, when, when, when someone says, I've got the entrepreneurial bug, I want to go start my own business, I've got some cash to inject, what business do I want to go start? Um, you've got a wide range of options. And when you're looking at franchisors uh, or franchise as an opportunity, then you really say, what's your background? What's your experience? Um, I, I, I like, again, Michelle, I keep on picking on you, but I like your story. <laughs> she's, right? she's a, yeah, it's a you good pick. I'm, I'm <laughs> fine with it. <laughs> you went through this process and you said, okay, I've got this background and experience, and it was um, kind of the, the nursing background and the health background, right? So mm -hmm. a, a franchise that, that – keeps you in that same industry, you can take all of those years of experience and apply those to this new opportunity as you start down the path. It, it cuts out one of the learning curves. So any industry experience you have, um, managerial experience, obviously as an owner of a business, you're most likely going to be hiring employees and that dynamic is different. So I look for management experience as well as, um, you know, budgeting really you know can you stay profitable and, and have you got any experience do you have any experience managing a financial uh, model that that says okay i've got to become profitable i need to be able to pay the loan back and protect the taxpayer's investment into your business mm -hmm. so what would someone do if uh i mean how do they get started i mean how do i get in touch with you i want to own a franchise i know i have i have some money that i can invest but I also, I mean, do I start, I guess the question is, do I start with you on the funding side or do I find the franchise and then come to you for the funding? Is there a certain order? There's no real order of operations that works. Obviously, it all needs to come together at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with certain prospects and clients uh, for e over a year just trying to say, okay, what is that right opportunity? How, did the, how, did, how do you structure this loan request, mm -hmm. right? And what is that right opportunity from the bank's opinion as well, right? Um, you have SBA regulation, you have bank appetite, and then you have the business itself. So you're, there's a lot to evaluate. So as you, the franchisee, is saying, I'm looking at this franchise, I'm in discussions, I'm getting close, I'm nailing down my location, I'm, you know, I'm about to pay the franchise fee, 
definitely start talking to a bank if you're going to use uh, SBA funds to get that process started. Or start to talk to Thomas, who's a wealth of knowledge. Y- absolutely. And you can specifically <laughs> reach me at trockwood at thebrandbank.com. That's T-R-O-C-K-W-O-O-D at thebrandbank.com. Or uh, you can always call me on my office line, 678-985-6860. And that number is again? 678-985-6860. Oh, well, I'm so happy to have you back on the show. And every time you're on the show, I, I learn something new because you are a wealth of knowledge. And it can get, that's a very, funding could be a very complex space to be. And it's a very important component if you're going to go into business ownership. In, in talking to somebody to help you structure it up front, any loan request really um, is always smart. Absolutely. I totally agree. Well, thank you. Really appreciate you being on the show. And uh, to everybody, Rich, uh, do you have any questions? I know you're always uh, th- thinking back, I want to know about this. I want to know about that. <laughs> well, just uh, it's been a great show. We still have uh, uh, several rema- uh, remaining moments. Uh, we want to talk about um, uh, your services and offerings, but um, kind of roundtable back to the uh, to guess an interesting um, thread in conversation is uh, for the folks with um, uh, what do we have? We have WWE in the building here? Uh, Up, upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so if there's any breakout fights or whatever, they'll come down and take care of our security <laughs> needs. <laughs> but we had Brian Stan uh, here in the studio. Uh, d- speaking of the um, MMA uh, fighter, uh, was interesting. And uh, up on our board, we had the um, uh, member of the president's cabinet the administrator for the entire SBA sat right here in the studio a few weeks back. So it's pretty exciting uh, connections. And um, we're still waiting for a return, return phone call from Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, but we haven't heard anything <laughs> from her yet. <laughs> um, She's hanging out with Natalie Wood. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, bad yeah, yeah. Jokes. so um, yeah, a lot of great conversation. And we want to circle back around but one more time with, uh, with Pam. So how would folks reach out to you? Uh, give you your information one more time as well. Yeah, um, if anyone needs to reach out to me, and obviously the name of my company is actually Franchise Intellect, uh, really guidance and knowledge around franchising, and I can easily be reached at 847-970-8765, or you can always email me at pam at franchiseintellect.com. Dot com. And Rich, if you don't mind, I, I want to talk about why we even put this show together. Yeah, absolutely. What is your kind of uh, your mission behind the show here? Yeah, the, um, you know, I, I really, um, you know, after you and I met, we started thinking about um, the importance of franchising. And, and there are so many parties that uh, are involved when it comes to franchising. And it can get very complex and confusing to the average person that's not familiar with the franchise industry. So what um, what I decided to do is I really wanted to put together a platform to bring together franchise professionals and resources to connect, educate, and collaborate to serve the franchise community as well as the franchise consumer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can see in the studio we've got so – everyone has a different role in the franchise world. So I, I really hope that this radio show is allowing our listeners to really get a pulse on what's happening in the franchise industry, if they're interested in getting involved in it, how can they get involved in the many different resources that are available to them uh, to get guidance and knowledge around franchising. All right, and so for um, listeners, because obviously th- most of these conversations are with subject matter experts, folks in the industry, mm-hmm. uh, but to go back to Michelle... <laughs> Seems to be the go-to person Uh-oh. this morning. Yeah, <laughs> is um, so for <clears throat> for folks that want to uh, kind of delve into the franchise world and uh, at maybe their startup and wanting to st- start their first business or uh, those baby boomers or retirees that are looking to kind of uh, keep themselves busy and additional income. Uh, so they would reach out to you in that capacity as a broker, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If if someone is considering franchise ownership, uh, you know, I I am a franchise broker and I represent over 500 franchise brands, but if you're interested in a Marilyn Monroe, a, a right. tap a, out fitness, a home helpers, um, I obviously would be able to assist you in, in really understanding, okay, what is it you're looking for in a business, and hopefully introduce you to the business that makes sense 
based upon your financial capability, <laughs> your business criteria, your your background, industry experience, skill sets. We take a look at all of that, do an analysis, and then appropriately introduce you to the concept that may make sense for consideration. And uh, kind of like a broker, so there's no fees involved for the people who sit down. That's correct. Yeah. Have so the conversation over the phone anywhere in the country as well as obviously here in the southeast that's exactly correct uh yep i am i the fees are complimentary to the individual because we are uh as a franchise broker we like to call ourselves consultants okay. uh we are a, we are compensated by the franchisor for recruiting that qualified mm -hmm. franchisee so it really works well again for all parties involved uh, it's it's a benefit to everybody. Involved. Well, it is that true win win definition, right? Because mm -hmm. you help um, vet vet kind of vet those people and f figure out what is a good fit for them, and then when you kind of um, identify through that conversation that franchise opportunity, the franchise or has eliminated a lot of their moving parts, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you do have in your toolbox folks like uh, Thomas here for funding and those resources, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and, the, and you bring up another important point there. As a, as a franchise consultant, you are what I call that business orchestrator because there are so many resources that are involved. And if you're not familiar <laughs> with how it all comes together, it's really nice to have that person uh, like a franchise consultant you know, at the center of that wheel saying, let's pull in this resource, let's pull in this resource uh, to really help you navigate those waters, which can get very confusing. Okay. And uh, we're going to go around the, the uh, table one more time, if you'd like, and let's ask each of our guests, uh, what's a good day look like for them in their business? And uh, what's, what's your biggest challenge or misconception, uh, right? Mm -hmm. But before we do that, um, uh, why don't you give out your information one more time? Oh, yeah. Uh, Pamela Curry. Okay. Uh, Pam at FranchiseIntellect.com, phone number 847-970-8765. You can also go to my website, which is www.FranIntellect.com. That's www.FranIntellect.com. Okay, we have about uh, seven minutes remaining. So, uh, Michelle, why don't you kick, kick us off, and uh, what's a good day look like for you, and what's a, a challenge you, you okay. face? Um, I would say a good day is um, really just a scurrying to kind of meet the needs that so we have so many needs to meet out there with hours that I'm finding caregivers and trying to keep them busy and keep us busy. And then also just getting the feedback from a client that is just sincerely thankful for us helping them to be able to take care of their loved one, that we made a difference, that we showed love, that we gave care. Um, that's a great day for us. Very rewarding. Um, very rewarding, very um, and then a challenge um, can be just getting the information out to the community. Um, as many providers are there out there, there are three times as many folks who just don't know we exist. Mm. Um, they don't know if there's a need that can be met, um, and we have the services to meet that need. So that can be a challenge. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Educate and expose. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. Makes sense. Thank you. How about yourself? Well, uh, this is Drew. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I look at people. Uh, yeah, for our listeners. It's radio, yes. yeah. <laughs> this is radio. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Uh, a good day is um, I get to talk to entrepreneurs every day that want to brand or grow their brand, right? And so it's fun in the fact that I get to look into their system, learn about their process, learn about their infrastructure, and see if it actually makes sense. Mm. So every day is a little bit different. So you get to talk to some very exciting opportunities like what we talked about today. And then the downside is that somebody might have a good business and even have multiple locations, but it's not a good vehicle for franchising. Mm, good so point. it's hard to tell them that this is not going to be a good vehicle for <laughs> franchising because they, everybody wants to be Subway. Everybody wants to be Five Guys, you know. And... Uh, but it, what's it's unique about that is that you get to talk to a lot of different people and see a lot of new ideas and that kind of stuff. So when people want to franchise their brand, they come to us. We can see, we can do some analysis and find out if it's going to make sense Absolutely. for them to franchise. They can just visit our website at um, brandgroup.com, and they can contact us really easily. Excellent. That's brandgroup.com. Right. Excellent. And yeah, I like I said another important step, right, to be able to do that feasibility test mm -hmm. or analysis to determine does this make sense as a growth strategy for you and your organization. Yeah, we we're right up front with them, you know, because it, we develop relationships where we're a partner with them to help grow, 
And if, if it doesn't have a good infrastructure that can support the franchisees, then it's going to be very difficult for them. Excellent point. Training and support, uh, something that's been ringing throughout this whole show. Mm. Mike, how about yourself? Good day. Yeah, thanks, Pam. Uh, you know, I've got a uh, – Drew, that was well said. So with, with all of those things that he mentioned as part of a good day, you know, it all, I'm, I would add that uh, – you know, it helps in two ways to see emerging franchisors and how good they're feeling to see that their proven business model's growing. You know, we're helping them meet their growth goals and they're growing their brand, which is they work so hard on, you know, their vision. Uh, and then the other part of it is just seeing, you know, folks that have been in transition or looking to get into business when, when they're awarded that franchise agreement, the excitement that they have and the start, you know, or relaunch of their career. Mm -hmm. It's just a great feeling to be yeah. a part of that. As you mentioned, as a consultant, you know, there's a lot of gratification in being able to help somebody, you know, understand what their dreams are and maybe improve their, their income, their wealth and their lifestyle and build equity and have fun while they're doing it. Um, as far as the challenges, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, my biggest challenge is, is just being fanatical about doing everything I can to expose Marilyn Monroe spas and tap out fitness in our company to the masses, mm -hmm. you know, to let them know that, uh, you know, I educate and expose. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, it's big. There's a lot, there's a lot out there. And that's uh, right. And really, um, yeah. How do you you know, bring your brand to the forefront and gain the mind share of those that you really want to gain the mind share of. Sure. So with that said, you know, if you want to learn more, go to frangroup.com and, of course, marilynmonroespas.com. That's an uh, easy website to remember, a couple of easy websites there to give you some good information and to get in touch with us. Right. And your phone number is? 678-641-6473. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate you being on the show. And Thomas, you don't have, I mean, your days are all great. They really are. Uh, <laughs> when you fund the American dream, <laughs> exactly. He never turns down anybody. Right. <laughs> never. never. <laughs> Every, everybody loves money, yeah. Exactly. Money guy, yeah. <laughs> Getting the approvals is one thing, but really, I mean, as Michael said, you know, helping an entrepreneur realize that dream of business ownership, it, it really does say, okay, you know, we are helping businesses create the American dream locally. These are our neighbors. These are our communities. And um, to be able to see the development and that growth and those businesses take off is, is phenomenal. So, um, you know, getting an introduction to somebody who has that dream is phenomenal. Um, that's a great day. Getting the approvals is a great day. <laughs> getting things funded and seeing, um, you know, the change that takes place uh, with the capital that's ba backed by the SBA is phenomenal. So, um, you know, the challenges are probably overcoming some of the misconceptions, working through a process. I think uh, you can mitigate those really if you set the expectations, work with someone who knows what they're doing, um, and, and kind of from the beginning um, understand what the process is going to look like and then execute. So, um, yeah, I, I love what I do, and uh, I appreciate everyone around the room here today um, sharing their stories. But, um, yeah, thank you for more, having me on. One more time, tell us how someone can get in touch with you. Absolutely. Um, you can email me directly at trockwood at thebrandbank.com. Uh, you can call my office, 678-985-6860, uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn uh, or the, ba the bank's website, which is uh, thebrandbank.com. Excellent. And I noticed you said it's his office number. He's not handing out his mobile number. <laughs> no texting. <laughs> well, I, uh, the show's just coming to an end here, and I just want to say thank you to all of our guests in the studio and a big shout-out and thank you to all of our listeners as well. This is Pamela Curry, host of Franchise Business Radio Show. Um, hope to have you listen again next month. Second Wednesday of the month Thank at 10 a.m. Thank you again for joining Pam Curie and her guests on the Pro Business Channel. Use the social media links here to share today's show and stay tuned for the next episode of the Franchise Business Radio Show.